Hello and very good morning to those with me today in the morning. Would like to talk to you about price bundling. So we talked previously uh, in the previous videos and in class, actually it was <laughs> an on-demand uh, class, that we talked about uh, the mixed bundling and we talked about the pure bundling and we emphasized that when it comes to real life situations, most of the time we will be focusing on um, mixed bundling, right guys? So for this purpose, I also focused on uh, mixed bundling and I gave you an example uh, on Excel to further uh, improve your understanding. Um, this is one of the things that I am improving this semester. Last semester students were telling me we want to practice more. So I'm giving you these little Excel assignments after the on-demand course so that we make sure that you have understood what is explained in the video. If you don't, always ask me to pop up on Zoom, especially on Wednesdays. I'm available. I'm always available from 12 to 2 on Wednesdays, but I am. I also can make myself available even after 8 p.m. Try me and you will not lose. All right. So we talked about how we are going to break this down into uh, little steps uh, where we were able to systematically test different price arrangements for each product. And I hope that you were able to come up with your own example and tackle this uh, 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 problem. Uh, using now evolutionary solver to find optimal bundle prices. A very good example for bundling is in telecommunication companies. So in telecommunication companies, they have three main services. These are, uh, oh, 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 Asoka. Sorry, guys. Uh, I can't um, write on my slides. Okay, unless it is presented as here. All right, let's take a look. Lovely people, take a look over here. We are going to talk about an example, a very interesting example from the industry. It's a telecommunication company. It's a classic when we talk about bundling. And the first uh, three options, I would call it, it's not a combination really, is the main three services the telecommunication company provides to its customers. First one is the internet. Second one is TV. Third one is mobile service cell phone in the united states all right now what are the different combinations of course one of the things that you've took a uh, first hand in statistics is how to um for example for the dice uh, the sampling space <laughs> if you guys remember the sampling space this is not exactly the same as the sampling space this is what we call it um, a, a table of different options. This is basic uh, uh, human skills, but it is similar to that sampling sp a, a table that you created for the dice, uh, the different possible outcomes. So we have here internet, we have here TV, and we have here mobile. So what are the different options here? Internet, TV, mobile. So this is the first step in any example that I give you. So if I give you another example in the quiz, then you probably, I don't like red, let's let's stick with blue. Then probably you're gonna say internet alone, TV alone. You're not gonna put it the double, okay? Or mobile. Then you're gonna say, okay, we're gonna have TV and internet. We're going to have mobile and internet. We're going to have TV and mobile, no internet. And those will be the options. Now you might tell me, why didn't you fill up this upper upper half? This upper half is basically, this is, is equal to this. Let me, uh oh This is, is basically equal to this. And this is, this is even also in statistics as well. And this is, is equal to this, right? And, oh wow, I didn't know this existed in the new 360. I should study more. And this is equal to this. 
Let's take a look. Indeed, it is. Look, TVI, TVI, TVI. Doesn't matter the order, right? In, in bundling, doesn't matter the order, really. And here is mobile and I, same. And over here is M and TV. So this is why I put the, the, the colors different. So you don't really need to waste your time uh, working on the upper half of the table. You just work on this lower half or on the upper half, whatever you like. So only on one half. So you draw a diagonal here, you start with the diagonal and then you work your way either up or either down. Don't waste your time, all right? So these are the options, internet and TV, internet and uh, cell phone or mobile, and TV and uh, 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 mobile. The only thing that this table doesn't give you is the last option all three products together mm, this is the only thing this table doesn't give you so keep this in mind that you always need to also bundle all the three products together all right this is the only thing that you need to remember so if i gave you like five different options then you will end up with uh, uh all the here we got a uh, three different options and then plus all of them together the five by five, all of them together also. So this is a very important uh, combination as well. So you will end up with seven different combinations. Either buying these as a standalone or buying all of them together. All right, let's go next. What happened? All right, we have this uh, Excel sheet. Um, it's a phone.xls <coughs> for this scenario. And in any other scenario, not only this scenario per se, in any other scenario, uh, let me just explain to you the main components that we are working with, all right? So the main components, components we are working with is as follows. First, you have to collect data, collect information from your customers on how they value each product. All right, the valuation is very important. So you will collect data and that will be the chunk of data on your Excel sheet that you will collect from your customers. If you have three different services like we have in this example then you will ask them how much they value an internet connection how much they value the tv cable and how much they value the service for a cell phone or mobile phone all right so they can come to me and ask me how much are you willing to pay for an internet how much are you willing to pay for tv how much are you willing to pay for a cell phone so this is the kind of uh, um, uh, questions uh, or the kind of data you would like to to extract from the customer. Most of the time we use something called conjoint analysis. Conjoint analysis to come up with uh, these last uh, numbers. Not all directly but through pairwise comparisons so conjoint analysis is usually used for this kind of data collection or marketing research all right so now this is where you start you start with this kind of data values um, on your excel what do you do next uh, well the teacher told us the first thing about this chapter was what was the first concept that I talked about it again and again and again and maybe some students got annoyed and told me oh you are still on the same slide why did I spend all that much time for you to answer this question now what was that concept that I talked about again and again it was the surplus and what was their, that surplus uh, equal to it was equal to a price minus the value that the customer places, the perceived value. We were also spending a lot of time on the perceived value and the philosophy of the definition behind it. All right, where's the price here? In fact, the price is what I'm looking for. All my investigation as a marketer, we're talking about the pricing. What is the chapter about? It's about pricing. See, we would like to know this price that achieves maximum profit or maximum return 
So I'm gonna have to organize my Excel in such a way that I would like to find out the best price. For what? The best price for different, for different combinations. Oh, okay. So I need to list down the combinations in my Excel sheet somewhere. Oh yeah, that's right. You need to list them uh, somewhere on your Excel sheet. Where shall I list them? Okay, I think I'm gonna list them over here. So I'm gonna say I have the following options. Option one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you remember from the previous slide over here, over here, we have seven different options and I showed you in detail how we got them. Already, so now we have this. So you know what? I, I like I since we are digital here, let's do the colors. So the second step is the com the combinations. So first step, usually I'll give it to you. I'm not gonna go ask you collect data, even though it will be way much more fun. But for time limitations, and this course is beyond the. I can, I can do that maybe in the future. It will be a very good uh, example for you. But not right now you are far away and it's very difficult. So here we go. Okay. So now we have these different options. What do I want to compute in these cells? What is it that I'm computing? What is it that I was talking about again and again in the same slide, the surplus? So over here, I'm gonna be computing the surplus. Okay, so the surplus will be the price minus the value. Mm, so I'm gonna have something here called price minus value, all right? Value is already here in the, in the red, right? Let, Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, the price is over here. Uh, the value, sorry, is over here in red. How about the price, lovely people? Mm, the price is I'm trying to look for. So I need to, in my Excel, I need to add this to my template, right? So let's move ahead and take a look. Where can I add this to my template? Well, maybe I'm gonna just put it, the price for each combination is right on top of it. So maybe I'll put the price somewhere over here. And this is the price I'm looking for, right? What is the best price? And that would be the price for each combination, right? All right, so, okay. So here is the numbering and here is the price for each combination. So I'm gonna pull out a price from here, as you can see here and the, uh, 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 the, 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 the value from this table, the red table. So here, you understand how we've done it. So now we have the surplus checked, perfect. But our, our, uh, uh, our, our end um, uh, uh, objective is profit. And profit, so this is the second step. Second step is talking about our objective. Our This is the computation of the surplus. I hope that this was easy busy. Now the second is we're talking about profit and profit is equal to revenue minus cost. We don't have the cost. Usually I'm, if I give you the cost, you have to incorporate the cost of each one. But in this example, I just want you to focus on the revenue because if the cost is constant, let's assume that this cost is constant, or let's assume what, that we are going to optimize revenue. If we optimize revenue, we optimize profit. Isn't that correct? If we maximize revenue, we maximize profit. But really, we need we need cost still for, for this statement to be correct. So we need to just say that we are going to consider that cost are, and the cost is constant, and it's not a problem in this case, and uh, then, we can start uh, working on the profit. So in this example, I would like you to focus on maximizing revenue. Okay, so this is the objective. So what is the objective? The objective here 
is revenue. What to do with revenue? Max. Maybe we need an A here. Don't you guys think so? We max this revenue. Okay, so now we are almost over here in the third step. So the third step is computing the revenue. All right, so. Mm, uh, just one, one thing. How are we going to compute the surplus for four? Four is not the internet alone the surplus of internet alone, TV alone, or sell alone. It's a combination of both. So you just have the price uh, that the customer here, uh, the, the price that we would like to find, minus the value of both of them uh, 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 summed together, all right? Just to make sure that this would be the price minus V1, V2. Okay, all right, now we have this checked also, let's focus on the objective function. What is the objective function? The objective function here is revenue. All right, so how are we gonna find revenue? Uh, revenue is basically the sum of all the prices. Oh yeah, that's right. So if I find the sum of all the money coming out from each customer's pocket, so if this is customer number one, customer number two, if I compute the revenue for each customer coming out of his her pocket by finding out which bundle will be the winning bundle for each customer, then I will be able to find the revenue. So this is my end goal. I'm going from the end then going back to how we find it. So I'm not going to tell you, let step number two, let's do this, step number three. No, I'm telling you the end so that you know how I, 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 I arrived at the end. So this is at the end. So the end is I would like here to sum all the revenue. <coughs> and this cell, the sum of all the revenue, will be my objective function for the solver. So over here, that will be revenue, revenue. This should be revenue one, revenue two, revenue three, revenue four. I should find these. How could I find these? From the surplus, when the customer has a surplus of zero or the surplus is a greater than, oh, I'm running out of space because I'm writing very price minus value. And when this is a greater than or equal to zero, then a purchase in, it, it might happen. Okay. So wh what are we looking at? We're looking at finding here what, which one has the maximum. Oh, so I need the maximum first. Out of all these, which one is the maximum? So I'm going to find the max, the max of all these guys. Let's see if I can do this successfully without any functions now. The max of, of all these. So which one is the maximum? Okay, once I found the maximum, I'll find out if this maximum is greater than or equal to zero. So I'll find out if this max is greater than or equal to zero. Once I find out if it's a greater than or equal to zero, let's this back again to writing in dark. So this max greater than or equal to zero. Now, when this max is less than zero, then there will be no purchase. And I wanna, I'm gonna give, get a revenue equal to zero, okay? Remember, the revenue equal to zero is not the same as this zero. This zero is the surplus. When I have a surplus of zero, actually there will be a purchase. You understand what I'm saying? If the surplus is greater than or equal to zero, the surplus is zero, that doesn't mean revenue is zero. Actually, it means there is revenue. If it's greater than zero, there is revenue. <coughs> but if it is less than zero, <coughs> there is no revenue. So if it's less than zero, the revenue will be zero, no revenue. If it's greater than or equal to zero, there will be revenue. And what will be this revenue? This revenue would be basically the value over here. Is it? No, it's going to be the price. Oh, okay. So let's say that this is achieves the maximum revenue. 
combination number four. So combination number four, let's assume that it achieves a maximum revenue. And then we checked if the maximum revenue is greater than or equal to zero. Oh yeah, it is greater than or equal to zero. So if it's a greater than or equal to zero, give me this price. Oh, okay. Very good. So then I can, in fact, find the revenue. Because if I have the price here and the price here and the price here, that achieves the maximum corresponding or associated with the maximum surplus, then I can sum them all and find the revenue. But as a matter of fact, here in Excel, Excel will give you the number here, the surplus. When you say, what's the maximum? It will tell you, I am the maximum surplus. So you still have surplus. But you want price. You don't want surplus. Mm. For this purpose, because you want surplus, you're going to say, first of all, I want to test if the surplus is greater than zero. You tested it and it's greater than zero. What what do you want to return? Then I want to return the price. It's it's an, another um, a, a, a cell. So I want you to locate when this is where this is is. And then I don't want you to return this. I want you to return another value. How am I gonna do this? We're gonna do this in something called lookup. Lookup function in Excel. In Excel, in, Excel, in, Excel, in Excel, there is a horizontal lookup, there is a vertical lookup, and last thing I checked what was today, there is a new thing called XLOOKUP. And XLOOKUP works for horizontal lookup just fine. Let's just stay with the edge lookup, which is the horizontal lookup. And over here, the horizontal lookup works this way. Excel tells you, give me a range, give me a table. So I'm gonna, and in within this table, I'll be able to um, uh, uh, find out uh, 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 the number associated with it, with it and return a totally completely different cell. All right, what can I do to do this? If I can get the index, if I can return here, so we cannot do it directly. Now I can give it, still we cannot do it directly with Excel. I cannot give Excel the surplus and tell the surplus in this data range, give me and return the uh, uh, price. What I can do is I can do it in two steps. The first step is I can return the index of this of this uh, uh, max where ma this max is positioned. And this index should be, as you can see here, uh, 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 as you can see here, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so if I return an index equal to its position, so if it's here, then the return here, this would return an index. So over here in this, if maximum is greater than or equal to zero, I'm gonna return an index. And this index over here is the position. I can return the position of this, of this cell. Okay, so I now have the position, position 4 or position 7, depending. Let's assume over here is the maximum surplus. So the position it will return if I, ver if I delineate or bound the, uh, 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 my, my, my table to be from here to here, it will be 7. All right, good, good, perfect. So I know that this is 4, the position. If the position is 4 over here, then what do we do? We want to say, okay, I have number four. I want to return this price that corresponds to the position four. Then actually, instead of uh, 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 defining this big table every time that we are uh, um, doing the lookup, we don't want to include this in the table. We don't need to include this line in the table. We just include something like this, this one. And then we say to Excel here, this is index, index number four or index number seven, whatever the number is. Find it in this table. And we have this arranged as a table, have one to seven, and here the different prices and return the price. Isn't this more efficient than actually defining a bigger table? that moves uh, along, yeah, we don't need that 
define we don't need to include any of these surplus computations in our um, uh, uh, function so the first step again is to find out what the maximum surplus the second step is to find its position once we found find its position we can find the corresponding price for that position we can't in excel find the maximum surplus and jump directly into its corresponding price so we have to do it into two steps an intermediary step will be finding the position and once i know the position i need to make sure that in my template i have the prices lined up nicely this price one price two corresponding to two price three corresponding to position three price four corresponding to position four you got the point right so you need to be very careful lining these up very nicely very carefully in the same position so that you can easily find, use what we call it a match function so over here you find out the index by the match function the match function returns the index returns the position so the match function you give the match function this maximum value and you give the max function a range and you tell the max function return the position of this maximum value in this range so the match function is used to return the position of this max value in this row in this not the whole row but in this range then comes after you got the position you want to return the price so over here you use the either the edge lookup or the x lookup now there is a new thing called x lookup so you use the horizontal lookup to tell excel taking this index yeah taking this index i want you to return a value so when you want to return a position of a certain value in a range you use match when you want to return the value of a certain criteria either a value or a position in a certain range you use the lookup function in excel now that you have all the prices lined up you can uh, find uh, uh, the revenue the, the sum of revenue and that's it and then you have to um, uh, just set up the solver all right so now are you guys ready to do some excel work this card it's too much mess over here this is our excel uh, file and our excel file has the internet tv cell phone and it also have the different combinations now this is one way of doing things but you could also uh, you could just have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lined up here, but you might get into trouble. Let's see how and why, or you might not. Actually, I I I don't quite remember, but I remember one thing. I remember there is with Excel with a vertical lookup. I always use vertical lookup for my pri uh, for my grading. For vertical lookup, you need this. Uh, um, and not the vertical, the match maybe also, um, the vertical, the vertical lookup. The lookup tables, you need these guys that, 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 um, that you say, I want this value to be looked up in a range. It should be at the, at, in the vertical lookup, it should be on the utmost left. Otherwise, it will not work. This is something with Excel. So if you're looking up the ID, and you want to find the grade so I have the ID over here and I want to find the grade if you have you should always have the ID here on the utmost left and then the grade here if you line up your table in such a way that the grade is at the table starts with the grade and then the ID it will not work it will not work and take it from me the same applies for the horizontal lookup if you try to do it like how I've done it just earlier on my uh, uh, on my uh, PowerPoint, it will not work. You need to just keep you need to put it 
on the utmost top. This is something that you just need to uh, be aware of when you are designing. And this is why even if you're putting here the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to seven, uh, it's not saving you uh, the hustle of adding the numbers up top over here. So this is, as we I just explained earlier, this would be, guys, our, 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 this would be our uh, lookup table, uh, lookup table, yes, the lookup range, to be precise. This would be the lookup range that we'll be working with. I, I hope that I can. So this in red would be the lookup range. Over here, this is the surplus computation. Because as I told you earlier, let's put it in a different color. Let's have the color blue, stick to that. And now, here we go. So it doesn't really look very uh, 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 prominent, the colors, but it's okay. So over here, we have the data that we collected from the customers on their evaluation of different services. And over here, we are trying to compute the surplus. The surplus, again, is, yes, it is the value the customer places minus the price. And over here, this is very important, and this is the price. So this is the price. So we are going to compute the following, the value minus the price. If we have a combination, as we, as we can see here, uh, three different combinations, I, I like the consistency, so over here, good. So we're gonna have the uh, 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 the value over here. Uh, oh, oh! In 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 the previous slide, I said uh, price minus the two values. I'm so sorry. It's always we start with always the values, the values, the sum of the both the values minus. You can put this brackets or you can just leave it out. But I'm just going to put the brackets for you to know that these two guys together are actually the value. I'm so sorry. In the previous slide, I, uh, in the previous explanation, I said price minus the summation of both values. It's, it's the other way around. I'm really sorry. It's the both the values minus price. So, and we always say that, right? So over here, whether, whether you are putting the uh, brackets or not, it's not going to make a big difference. Why is that so? Because it's going to be all the same. So putting the brackets or not putting the brackets doesn't make sense. It uh, doesn't make a difference. And over here, you're going to sum all of these together and subtract by the price up top. So you can sum all these together or you can just say A6 plus B6 plus C6 and then minus the value over here. All right. And then over here, you just... Um, uh, uh, highlight the range of course in reality all this would be uh, in your Excel all this would be a nothing and over here also there would be nothing and you just need to put the value minus the price value minus price value minus price and then the sum of both values minus price and so forth and then you just um, highlight this and on the corner when the mouse cursor changes shape from a big uh, uh, white uh, across to a skinnier, a slimmer black cross. You just double click and here we go. All right. The same applies here. There is nothing. It's all. <coughs> <coughs> and over here, I'm going to put the maximum surp surplus. So this is the maximum, I, I think there's the maximum surplus. What's the maximum surplus? It's the max. Oh, which one is the max? So over here, the max is the max of all this range. Which one is the max? All right. Did you buy it or not? Is this max greater than zero or equal to zero? So is this max, if this max here, we took it in K, so you know what? Um, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Here, K6 here is the maximum surplus. 
If this maximum surplus is less than zero, as we said earlier, there will be no revenue. There's, there will be nothing, so it will be zero. Otherwise, use the match function, and the match function returns its position. So give me the match function, which is the position, match the position and return the position of this maximum surplus in this range, yeah, and give me the position I want the precise. So this is why this we have zero over here. So it takes the following parameters or arguments. The lookup value, I am looking up this maximum surplus value in a range. So the lookup array, this is the array or the range. And then the match type, there are three different match types. And the match types I'm looking for is uh, if before you even finish this and you want to put it, it will um, uh, prompt you one is less than and zero is exact match and one is greater than. I want the exact match. And this is why we have zero over here. And that's it. And you hit enter. Now you would like to compute the revenue. How is that so? This is, let's put this. Now you're done with this and you see how I'm copying. I'm just going into the uh, edge the lower corner and double clicking any of these values is negative um, I can't find any negative surplus here so most of it is max uh, okay it, this might change and most of it max ah oh yeah yeah <laughs> it should be most of it in in the in the positive because all of these are not set up yet and all of these are zero. So the value minus zero, of course, is going to be in the positive. But let's imagine one of these values was uh, uh, negative, then this would be equal to zero. And when you run the solver, you might have, uh, you will have actually some of these being equal to a negative uh, value or to zero. And then you can see the, 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 the difference. So do you see why it's all positive? It's because the price is zero and we are subtracting the price from the value. Anyway, now the last step is to look up this seven. I know by my mere eye that seven is, I need this. How could I do it with Excel? I'm just gonna tell Excel, look up this seven in this range and return this. Okay, how do we do that? How do we achieve that? We say, if this L six, which is the body or not the position. If this position is equal to zero, the position is equal to zero. This means, uh, um, 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 uh, it's, it's, uh, give me back zero. Um, else give me the lookup. Do we need if the position is equal to zero? Because if it's equal to zero, um, there's no position here equal to zero. The index starts from one to seven. So um, let's try it both ways and see. I'm going to put it like that and I'm going to put it equal V lookup. So V lookup. I'm looking up this value in this range and make sure that you stabilize the range. So you put it like this or give it a name. And then um, Basically, you want to uh, uh, which column index, which 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 column you want to return because this could be like a, a longer table. It could be a table with three, four, five, six, six different rows. So, which row do you want me to return? I want you to return this row. So, this is row number one. You look up the value in row number one, and I want you to return the row number two. So, over here, I want you to return row number two. And that's it. <coughs> <coughs> so let's take a look. Um, this is the you're looking up uh, V lookup and this value look it up in this big range and return this index. Uh, return the value here in uh, in the column index number. So the column index number, let's see, if we put one, it won't work. It gives me one. If I put two, it gives me two. 
Oh, because it's vertical lookup. I'm so sorry. It should be horizontal lookup. I'm so sorry. This is taking uh, our columns. I'm sorry. So uh, horizontal, horizontal lookup, and then we put two. Now, now I see what the problem is. So this is horizontal lookup, not V lookup. As I told you earlier, I'm very uh, much used to using vertical lookup, and I made the mistake. Just innately, I just put V lookup, but it's actually H lookup. Even if you put X lookup, let's try the X lookup here. Uh, X lookup has different parameters, so I have to explain this to you. I have it opened actually on the um, on the browser, so I explain it to you if you would like to learn a new uh, uh, lookup function with Excel. So over here, this is correct. Let's take a look here, and over here, this is the total, the sum of all this revenue, and, um, and let's start with. I'm putting this without the if you see this is have if this value over here is equal to zero then it is zero because the, there's no maximum if all of them are equal um, then there would be one of them would be the maximum but um, as I told you here when we put this we said if it is less than zero so if for example all of them in the negative so if all of them in the negative then I want you to return a position here uh, zero and this says what happens if the position is zero so this is why you need this Do you see I want to show you the difference if you thinking that you don't need the if statement please think again over here we said if this value is the surplus is in the negative and it, then give me a uh, zero meaning the maximum value is in the negative this means all the values are in the negative so if the maximum value of all the values is negative this means all the values are negative and this means there will be no purchase in this in this case we need the if statement over here to say if this is equal to zero then give me revenue zero basically you got my point so please do not make this mistake I just it's good that I put this edge lookup so I show you the diff that if you actually mistaken this with VLOOKUP, it won't work. So do you see the guys the difference and why we need the if statement? This is one of the questions that students asked me last semester. Why do we need the if? So I hope this semester, if you actually understand everything or 70% of what I'm saying or 80% of what I'm saying, or you understand the logic, but you find it a little bit difficult because you've never used the match function. So it's just a matter of you studying the match function, for example, or studying the lookup function. But you know what, you, what we're doing. So you know that we are here getting the maximum surplus. But this maximum surplus could be negative. Could be. I, I, I'm, I'm, my valuation is way much less than other people in the market, and it's way much less than the, the price. So in this case, you might have a zero uh, or negative. And if you have a zero, it's okay. But if you have a negative, the maximum surplus is negative, then you need to say if it's less than zero, if it's negative, return zero as a position. And this here, there is the position starts from one, the index starts from one, two, three, four, five. This is why you need to always put it as one, two, three, four, five. Don't start numbering 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and say it is a serial number. No, this index here, this returns the index here one. All right, so now if this value, the, 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 the position is equal to zero because it's out of the range, it's all negative, then give me zero as a revenue. Else, find out with the edge lookup this, this value, the L6, in this range and stabilize and fix the range and return the row number two because this is row number one return row number two and this why all of them now are zeros now let's head to the solver with the solver you would like to maximize your objective is to maximize this little revenue over here and you need to maximize it by changing these prices you want to find these prices that achieves the maximum revenue now if you don't put any constraints it's gonna be uh, yeah it's gonna be a lot of trouble so the first thing first is you need the price to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. And you can actually just hit that and you can make unconstrained variables, non-negative. But these are constraints. Remember, these are unconstrained values. 
so don't check this why because mm, because um, um, uh, uh, the surplus here is already in the negative so keep it as is so you need the price to be greater than or equal to zero the prices are never in the negative but what about the maximum value how can I uh, look into the maximum value the maximum value for the price could be um, uh, somewhere let's let's let me show you for example let's take the maximum here of the internet alone it is from the in the if, from the expert in the industry like this is the maximum we should be uh, pricing because we can't make like we can't be that much greedy and earn more than blah 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 percent of profit margin on our cost yeah because you have your cost and then you have a target of a profit margin so you can't just make like 50 percent because just because you can this means that you are super greedy as you can see here this is the max how how here's the average it's not coming trust me it's not coming from here so some of my students maybe try to make it uh to make an a judgment and see the average for example but trust me guys it's not really coming from here but if you want you can just take a look this is 42 and this is 25 and this is 21 this may be the averages are are the sum of all these averages may be equal to around 100 as you can see it's even uh, equal to about $88 so if you don't have any information uh, uh, about what would be the maximum price because you don't have a target uh, but this is not even realistic all corporations or businesses has a target uh, um, profit margin but let's say that your target profit margin you found out that is way much less than the average market and you probably aiming at the average market then you probably gonna put it as uh, 88.35 or 80 uh, 89 or or 88 you can put it as an average 89 or you can put it you know what uh, uh, let's say let's say um, 88 over 100 is actually um, this is 88 percent and then you added 20 percent mm, okay so I would say let's try the solver with the sum of all the averages as a maximum I, I'm gonna be like lenient with you because last year it was troubling for the students that oh where am I gonna get this number from in the quizzes I'm gonna give you this number so I'm gonna give you constraint the price to be less than or equal to $100 or $200 but in reality also I, I really I really would like to help you out in case you're doing a real life example in reality you're probably gonna take a look at the average here the average market is about uh, $88 you probably don't want to focus on the average market you want to focus on a little bit higher than the average market up to you in fact to say the truth guys the way that we do it we do this in reality let me explain really clearly how we do it this in reality you have a cost for internet a cost for TV and a cost for cell phone any valuations below the cost you keep it in the table it's okay but when you're doing these calculations that I've just done earlier these ones you exclude these because you want the average the average that uh, uh, that of the of the numbers that is achieving profit so you understand guys where do we get this in real life so if these valuations are less than the cost you could keep them if you want or you could just get rid of them it's up to you really but you could keep them if you want because honestly uh, to say the truth guys sometimes with the bundling you can make money even though the the the, the, the valuation the, the combination of both of them can make you more money than the, the separate valuation but when you are doing this step make sure that here you're averaging all these values that are greater than the cost this is all what I'm trying to say and then if you do that you will get the hundred and probably this is where the author got his hundred from but he doesn't mention that in the book probably he mentions that uh, he keeps little cookies and little snacks for his own lectures this things that we we'll probably do when uh, uh, 
some sales styles. Okay, no problem, the sales styles. Okay, so now let's get started. Solver back again, this is the maximum of the revenue. This is the constraint, and now we know we've got the 100, and we use, as usual, evolutionary server is solver, and then we solve. And wait for it, it might take a, a long, 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 long time. In class, I will provide you with the answer for the revenue so that we can get going and, uh, um, and speed up the process. So, uh, and in summary, before I uh, 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 terminate this video, in summary, you will collect this data by either conjoint analysis or any other way, collecting values, uh, the valuation or the perceived value so that you can, in this here, in this area, you can compute the surplus. The surplus is the value minus the price. This price is subtracted from the value of both internet and TV summed together. This is the sum of all these values minus this price. Okay, now you need to find the maximum value so that you can return its position, its index. And this is here. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, do you want to continue anyway? Uh, well, uh, they will continue the maximum number. Continue. I, I needed to change something with the options. I'm sorry. I have it in my slides here. Um, so in class, I need to remember that we need to uh, change these so that we speed up the process. So you need to actually speed up these. So you need to make sure that these options are set up nicely. Uh, uh, and, and this as well, but I haven't uh, checked these out, so it's going to take me longer. So in any case, guys, do you see guys over here, the initial solution? All of these are negative. All of these are negative. Mm, so I ended up with revenue zero, and this is exactly what I want. All right, so we got this, and then we got the surplus, and after the surplus, we said, okay, the surplus is actually price, a value minus price. Where is the price? So we set up this lovely range for the price. And initially, we just needed this range to be the price. But then we found that when we find the maximum, we find the position, we actually want to find out the corresponding price for that position. So we need to actually put here one or number these one through seven. And then we returned the revenue. The revenue is basically the price. So this is where we use the V lookup or the H lookup. I'm gonna put on Moodle also here the H lookup explanation from the Microsoft Excel support. And there's also a new function called X lookup. And with X lookup, there is a whole video, but the video explains more or less the like a vertical arrangement of the X lookup, not both. And uh, let's take a look at Ah, exact match, if not found, return the next smaller item. Exact match, if not found, return the next larger item. Oh, oh, this is why. So the exact match or exact match, if not found, return in A. And a wild match where have a special meaning. Oh, okay. So you can take a look at the special meaning as well. So here's an example for an X lookup. So this is an X lookup of this value in this range and you return the index. This is another uh, uh, example where it's it resembles the VLOOKUP. So unlike VLOOKUP says, it can return an array with multiple items. So this is the difference between the XLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP or the X lookup with the H lookup. With the X lookup, we can return multiple values, an array. Mm, very good, very good. Now we know, now we know, it's nice. So we need to return only one single value in our Excel. And because of that, we don't need to use the X lookup. But now you know, in the future, if you're working with Excel and you wanna return not only one value, but you wanna return an array, multiple values, then there is a function for that in the new Excel and it's called the X lookup, like X -re reality, which is A, R, V, R, and all other uh, uh, breeds. 
So in the, um, there is a very interesting discussion here on the results when the solver is ready. And one of the things that you will notice here um, is that <coughs> we're going to find out that this is the prices. And for the internet alone, it's going to be $74. While for the internet and the cell phone, it's going to be $69. Okay, yes, the combination should be a little bit cheaper, is it? Hmm. Then we have the TV is 35. The TV and the cell phone is going to be 69.99. Okay. Uh, because actually TV alone is 35 and cell alone is 82. So it is probably cheaper for me to get a TV and the cell. But there's something here. The, um, um, the thing is, and here's the discussion. The thing is, or do we have the discussion here? No, I'm just explaining the mutation and all that. I'm going to explain this in class. But now for uh, the video, just for those students who didn't come to class or those who have difficulties, you can just read this in class. I'm going to explain this. For now, I'm just going to jump into the interpretations of the results. And as you can see here, you can get the maximum uh, profit of this much. And uh, the prices of the combination are like this. But there is a problem with this price combination. You cannot go to the market charging $74 for the internet service, which is higher than the internet and the TV together. So always, this is one of the things that we also talked about at the very beginning uh, of the class, that this is way much cheaper than both of them sum together, the internet and the TV service, because it's unreasonable to provide two services for a lower price than only one. You know what does that mean? This means that all the time, I'm not gonna go for internet alone. I'm gonna ask you for internet and TV service, even if I'm not gonna use the TV. So it's only that you're providing me service that I'm not gonna use because more is better for a customer. It's not realistic. Do you see why it's not realistic? Because it, you need to have the price of the combination in between this price or the price of this alone or the price of this alone with whichever one is maximum and the upper pound the lower pound would, would be the uh, price of either one of these whichever hits the max and the lower bound will be the lower bound will be the sum of these together okay does that make sense i hope so because you can't just uh, um, uh, charge here $74 for internet and then over here, internet and TV, I can pay $69. I'm gonna, of course, all the time go for internet and TV. And this not gonna be, uh, uh, the, the, the internet alone will not be uh, an option and it's not profitable. Okay, so we need this internet and TV uh, to be uh, a little bit higher than internet alone uh, or, or TV alone. Not a little bit, but it should be higher. To what extent this is the game? And this is the, the uh, little bit of a concept that I would like to explain. And we call this a penalty. We call this concept a penalty. So basically, you want to penalize me, uh, to penalize the system for every unit uh, that you uh, um, um, uh, 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 have it as uh, 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 let me explain it here but this is still running and running and running 3359 let's see what was the answer here 3359 3413 okay so this is why we are still waiting for it We I should have put the options but I want to run very quickly through it so this is why so I'm going to stop here and I'm going to cancel this oh I cancelled everything I should Wait, okay. All right. In any case, in the next uh, uh, sheet on your um, in your Excel sheet, I have here set up the penalty for you. Let's take a look at this penalty. This penalty is basically the uh, E4 minus G4. What are these? E4 minus G4. As you can see here, this is the price uh, of uh, this alone 
minus the price of these two together. So, okay, this is the price of this alone minus the price of this combination. Uh, you can also, uh, there, there will be another one where there is the price of the internet, which is D4 minus G4. Let me show you. So there will be another one that has the internet minus, was it? Yeah, just below it, the internet minus. So basically, you want the price of the internet plus TV to uh, be higher than the price of the TV or the price of the internet on its own. So this is what this means. So TV minus I plus TV means that an I minus I plus TV, this here will give us a value. This value, right now it is zero, 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 but once it is uh, done, uh, um, uh, there will be a value. And then there is a penalty. If this value is greater than zero, <coughs> the, 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 this division, uh, this value, uh, which is TV minus this and this, meaning the TV is greater, the price of the TV is greater, then it's okay keep it as uh, the price here uh, being uh, P70, which is this price over here. Else, give me a zero. So uh, basically you are emphasizing and um, enforcing the computer to give me a price of I plus TV that is higher than the price of a TV because TV minus I plus TV should be uh, here greater than zero, not even equal to zero. Okay, so this is basically how do we compute the penalty and I hope this makes sense, this explanation makes sense. So we need the price of the combination to be greater than the price of either one of them. So here, combination of internet and cell should be greater than cell or internet alone. TV and cell greater than TV or cell alone. All of them should be greater than this and this together, this and this together, this and this together, uh, or TV minus all together, cell minus all together, and I minus all together. And then you can put here the total. And this is the sum of all the penalty prices. This sum will be incorporated. How is this making a uh, 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 contribution into the, into the, this sum, Q82, the sum here, this sum is Q82. This sum, Q82, in fact, in fact, in class, I will show you a different kind of penalty. This is, uh, the author talks about how it is an art more than science. I like systematic, I like systematic approach. First of all, we found out in the first, uh, the first step is very important. So don't jump into the penalty immediately. The first step showing us that the uh, profit or revenue, sorry here, the resulting revenue is in a three, in a four digit, one, two, three, four, in the thousands. So the penalty and the constraining price is in the hundreds. So I tried, and I'm going to show you in class, I tried to multiply this penalty by 10 and then by 100. The solution when I multiplied by 10 was lower. The optimal revenue was lower than that when I multiplied it by 100. And the result when I multiplied by 100 was equal to the, to the, to the, to the result when I multiplied by 500. So there's no need for confusion. Uh, the author doesn't clearly explain how he's done it. It's not in the slides. I can't change the slides because of that. But honestly, over here, as you can see, I have over here the maximum profit. I know how to do it uh, in, in, in this sense. Maximum profit is in the thousands. Prices are in the hundred. So uh, I'm going to have my, uh, not because the maximum price was a hundred, then I multiplied by a hundred. No, uh, just um, usually when we're talking about um, uh, configurations or uh, not, what do we call it? Uh, uh, there's a word for that, uh, not configuration of a function, but we call it, uh, uh, 
Anyway, when we all want to uh, want to set up parameters for a certain function, what we do is we always have increments of 10 or increments of 0 0.1. It's always like about 1, 0 0.01. It's systematic, yeah, 0 0.01. So from practice, a, 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 a practice that you have increments of 1 or decrements of 1 or increments of 10, decrements of 10, again, 100 or, 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 or. So this is where the one came from, not because it was uh, uh, it was from the settings of the sol the solver settings. It didn't come from the solver settings. It came from the practice that we always do that uh, when we would like to um, uh, not configure. What do we call it? Uh, there's a word for it. I forgot it. So um, this is how we do it. We always add uh, or uh, deduct increments or decrements of. Uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 10, or hundreds, or, or, or. So this is where it comes from. So in any other exercise, when you're doing any other exercise other than this, uh, in real life exercise also, you can just take a look at the resulting uh, uh, revenue, and from there, and your price, and from there, for example, let's say that this was five digit number, and here is 100, you start with, if you want to start with even a 10, I, I do it. I like to always be systematic. If you want, you start with it, multiplying the penalty by 10, by 100, by 1,000, because you have 50,000 as a revenue. So you can try all three of them. So you try with uh, 10, 100, and 1,000, if you have the total revenue being in a five-digit number, so that you can find the right uh, arrangement configuration, let's say, of that penalty uh, constant multiplication, what you multiply it by. Okay, so this is how we incorporate the penalty. We incorporate the penalty by multiplying it with a parameter. This parameter could be adjusted based on, they call, they call it an art and science, I call it, it's an art, but it's perseverance. Take a look at this, four digits. You look at this, two digits. And then you start, if you want to even start with one digit, two digits, you know there's no need for three digits. It's not gonna work nice. So always one digit below. If it's five digits, start with one digit, two digits, three digits, four digits if you want, and then uh, go ahead. But the prices are always in two digits. So this is why I always say I stop, to, I stop when the number of prices with the number of the prices of the digits, if you want. So, it's just to try. I, I'm just gonna try, honestly, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try from one digit, to two digit, to three digit, to four digits, if the total here is five digits. I'm gonna try, what can I do? Just try. All right, this is it for today's video, and this video, I made it not for the on-demand class, I just made it for you guys, who had difficulties following me in class so that you can pause the video and you could uh, just catch uh, up with my explanation. If you have any questions or concerns, you can find me on Wednesdays in the office hour from 12 or just take an appointment with me. Thank you so much.